Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green, manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Wombly's today taking on Carlisle United. Possibly Carlisle or Carlisle. No one knows for sure. It's a mythical place um, and mythical places belong to the people who believe in them. Uh, today's uh, topic comes from Jake who donated to the Project for Awesome. Thank you, Jake. Uh, it's about the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. But first, let me show you the love song of AFC Wimbledon. Uh, Osborne got a red card in the last game, so uh, he's out. We've got Lockyer in there. We're starting with Lyle Taylor, our Montserratian international, and uh, Tommy Elliott up front. I'm thinking about calling him Billy Elliott after the uh, dancing boy from the 2000 uh, Oscar-nominated movie. Um, but I don't have it. I don't know. I'm not sold on it. Um, I guess we could also call him, actually, come to think of it, you know what we could call him, Meredith? We could call him T.S. Elliot. Um, and every time he scores, I could use a different uh, T.S. Elliot line. I think I'm going to do that. It's T.S. Elliot. So today, starting, it's going to be Lyle Taylor, our Montserratian International, and the great modernist poet T.S. Elliot is our other, uh, our other striker. I'm excited for that. Uh, hopefully, he'll score, and I'll get to si uh, uh, tell you a little bit of poetry. That's a good, that's a good initial moment. And then T.S. Elliott's on the ball. Oh, he took a low, low percentage shot there because he was dreaming. And who can blame him? As you can see, we're the best defensive team in League Two right now. It's amazing. So the love song of Jeffrey Prufrock is this uh, poem by T.S. Elliott um, that uh, was probably, I wouldn't say it was the first poem I ever loved, but I, um, I loved it when I was in high school. Uh, and there were only a few poems I loved when I was in high school. I was a big fan of uh, Emily Dickinson. Uh, there's a poet named Rita Dove I really liked in, uh, and, 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 uh, in, in high school. I really uh, also liked some of Maya Angelou's poems. I liked some of Dorothy Parker's sort of uh, light verse. Oh, that's a, nice, that's a nice interception. That's good. That's good. That's also good. I like the way that you're running. And shoot! Oh, boy. Not what we were looking for. Lyle Taylor, nobody knows why he wears gloves, Meredith. It's not cold. It's just a fashion statement. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe it's part of being from Montserrat. Maybe if you're, if you're a Montserratian international, England always seems cold. Um, so, anyway, the interesting thing about the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock, as opposed to the other poems that I, I, I liked in high school, is that with the other poems I liked in high school, I had some idea what they were about. Um, look at that. Look at that defender's hair for Carlisle. He's magnificent. He makes our, he makes our ginger, uh, John Green, look like a fool. Do you see him, Meredith? He's hard to miss. Goodness gracious, he's a beauty. Um, why is it that I love gingers so much? What is it? What is wrong with, what, what happened in my DNA that I became such a massive fan of gingies? Anyway, um, I don't have any idea what the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock is about. And I don't mean that like I didn't have any idea when I was in high school. I mean, I don't have any idea. Oh boy, they're just rampaging. It's rampaging, but we've got Shay. Um, I don't, I don't mean that I didn't have any idea when I was in high school. I mean that I'm like a full-grown 38-year-old adult who has read now quite a lot of poetry. Um, and I have a better understanding of what like uh, T.S. Eliot's classic poem, The Wasteland, is about uh, than I do about the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. I'm sure it's about very important and, 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 oh my God, look at that ginger, beautiful things. All I know is that I love it. Uh, if that makes any sense. All I know is that, like, uh, there is something about the sound of it, the rhythm of it, the lines in it that I love. Um, especially, oh gosh. Oh, he's taken down from behind! It's a penalty! Oh, it's a penalty! Who should take it, Meredith? Who should take it? Nobody knows for sure. Hold on. I gotta find out who my penalty taker is. I have no idea. Not that I'm not prepared. Uh, match facts, uh, here. Uh, uh, it's not that I'm not, don't stop saying that I don't take this seriously, people. Formations, rolls, rolls, rolls. Who's my penalty taker? Penalties. Green. Mm. Are you good at penalties? 58. Wouldn't say you're a genius at them. 59. 59. Hmm. 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 Now I'm going to go with Elliot because he is the subject of today's video and everything. All right. Good luck, Elliot. I believe in you. I believe in you 100%. Only a yellow card for that. I, you know, I might have been a little harder on, on him. 
Um, it seemed like a very similar tackle to the one I got a red card for. Yeah, stop fighting it, though. You've just got to accept it. You did foul me from behind. There's no... Let's see a replay of that. Elliot, beautiful, beautiful job. And then he's just... His legs are taken out from under him. It's cruel and unusual punishment. Look at that ginger. What's his name? Henry? Will you write that down for me, Meredith, real quick? Just go ahead. Just write it down. Just trust me. I'm not going to get him or anything. That'd be crazy. I pick people based on their quality, not on their ginginess. Here we go. Big moment in the game. It's T.S. Elliot. It's not a bad penalty. Light! Light! The visible reminder of the invisible light. Light! The visible reminder of the invisible light. I grow old, I grow old, I shall wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled. T.S. Eliot with a beautiful goal. A perfect penalty to send us 1-0 up here in a League 2 game against Carlisle United. Possibly Carlisle United. Nobody knows. Um, so, uh, right. So I don't, I, again, I don't really know what the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock is about. I mean, I know it's about like, uh, I, I don't know, death and, and getting, you know, getting older and everything. But there are just so many beautiful uh, images inside it, uh, you know. Um, and I, I just, uh, I find myself going back to that poem again and again at different times in my life just for the pleasure of the language, uh, like for the pleasure of reading it, if that makes any sense. Uh, his name is Henry. It's B. Henry Meredith. Um, he just wants to be Henry, like my son. Uh, it's so sweet. All right, here we go. There we, that's a nice turn. That's a nice turn by Little Reeves. Some people call him the new golden child or the actual golden child, the authentic golden child. And then it's through. Gosh, that's some good passing by me. Oh, it's 2-0. It's 2-0. Oh, everything is beautiful and nothing hurts. You know who just scored that goal? The, also, the inexplicably also gloved T.S. Eliot. Oh. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love being alive. All right. Hold on. I just got an email from my brother. Not that these things are important, but, you know. Um, anyway. Uh, the love song of Jail for Proofrock begins, Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. And I think, I think it's a table. It might be the table. Anyway, uh, I love that image so much when the evening is spread out against the sky. Like it just, uh, it, it doesn't, to me, like it's it, it, like the pleasure of, of it's, it's hard to explain, I guess, to people who don't feel pleasure in, in language. But there's like, for me, there's like a pleasure just, just in the beauty of an image or, or like something, something inside of me is, is arrested or made, made like slightly new and different by having, having read a set of words like in a, per, in a way that I've never heard before. Another example of that in, in the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock is, uh, in the room, the women come and go talking of Michelangelo. I just, there's something, I, I don't even, I, I, again, don't know what it means. Uh, all I know is that I love like the way that the uh, the rhyme lines up. I love the way that the um, that just like the rhythm of the symbols work. I feel this way about a few uh, a few things that I've read over the years, where I just feel this like incontrovertible feeling that that it is great. Uh, and I don't really care to debate it with people who disagree with me. I feel the same way about oh, that's a great ball. Oh my God, that's magnificent goalkeeping by Carlizzle. Magnificent. I mean, that was just a fantastic ball in. We are getting so much better, Meredith. Can you see the future? She doesn't know. She doesn't know. She's, she's distracted by the beauty of B. Henry's hair. And who can blame her? Oh, it's cleared off the line. I'll tell you what. They've gotten great at defending corner kicks in FIFA 16. Suddenly, the AI is so good. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, and I like the, the other thing I like a lot about the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock, again, not knowing what the poem is about, is, uh, the way that it talks about, uh, time, the way that like time sort of like, uh, circles back, uh, and, uh, it, is, is one thing. Oh, that was, that was good. Wow. Good job, Carlisle. You got to give credit where credit's due. Um, the way that like time circles back in it and, um, and and th there's almost like a dreamlike quality to it. I mean, even at the even at the very end of the poem is uh, uh oh uh oh oh everything worked out better than expected. Is um, 
uh, I believe like the last line is till till uh, wh- till uh, till human voices wake us and we drown. Um, there's something about. I mean, obviously, like it's a tremendously like kind of sad and uh, abrupt last line, um, but the whole the whole thing has that like dreamy uh, quality of how time is actually experienced, which is not linearly right. Like we all we all know that like time may be may be marching on in a supposedly straight line, but that's not how we experience it. And we also know that like time actually isn't straight because it's shaped by uh, space. Um, that like space and time are kind of mutually de- weirdly dependent. Um, I'm not sure that that was known in like 1920 or whenever T. S. Eliot wrote uh, the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. But anyway, I, I uh, that like it has all of these arresting images, and that is something that really, really. Oh, what are you doing there? I was a little. Oh, were you offside? Oh, Lyle, come on. I don't. I, I guess. I guess my question, Meredith, is is not so much why is he wearing gloves as it is why is he wearing gloves and short sleeves. It's a bold. It's a fashion choice, right? At that point, like you're not wearing gloves to stay warm, or you'd also be wearing long sleeves, more or less by definition. You're wearing gloves as a way. Maybe it's a tribute to his uh, to to his most beloved uh, pop star. Oh my goodness! Out of nothing, Carlisle suddenly almost scores. But we've got Shea. It's all good. Um, maybe it's a maybe. Oh, that was a great ball from Henry. He is. I'll tell you what. Based on seeing him in this game, he's very promising. Um, uh, I I guess the only thing that that I would say about about Lyle Taylor's gloves is that it might have something to do with his well known love for Michael Jackson. That's the only possibility I can really see. Um, uh, the other. Uh, uh, anyway, the only other thing I wanted to say about, uh, about, uh, the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock is that when I was young, it sort of like, it, it sort of shaped what I thought adulthood looked like. And I don't, again, I don't know if this has anything to do with the poem itself or just like my very limited, uh, uneducated reading of it. But I want to say like that I think it's okay not to know what a poem is about, is about and still like it. I think that there's something, I think sometimes we're so harsh. Oh, oh, I was offside, I guess. We're so harsh on uh, this idea that, like, you know, you've got to understand authorial intent instead of just, like, being able to enjoy something um, as you enjoy it. And for me, The Love Song of Jail for Prufrock is the ultimate example of a poem that I enjoy in a way that is probably, or, or maybe even, like, you know, maybe has nothing to do with what the poem is actually about and maybe has nothing to do with um, what I should get out of it and is just purely about my own personal weird relationship with it but it it shaped the way i thought get that ball yes it shaped the way i thought about adulthood um like there's that line i grow old i grow old i shall wear the bottoms of my that was not a good cross i shall wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled and something about that like when i was in high school it just just by oh look at henry he's a he's a marauder meredith he's back he's forward he's back he's forward we should have made some substitutions in this game we're, we're a little bit winded. It just occurred to me. That's probably why they're moving so well. Oh, that's... People yell at you for, for not making substitutions? It is kind of your job, to be fair. Oh, that's nice, but, we, but we're all too tired. No, we're not. Reeves isn't tired. He's never tired. Keeper makes a nice save, but Reeves is still on it because he's got no quit in him. I love that kid. Oh, but we can't compete with Henry. That little orange-haired bastard is so good. Oh, not a great foul. And he got a red card. Dang it! I'm so bad at not getting red cards. <laughs> the other thing in this game... Oh, I can't substitute him, of course. Uh, I'm going to move you up here. So that... And I'm going to move... I'm going to bring in... Uh, uh, hmm. Beer, I guess. And Bullman. Because John Green is very tired. And I'm going to take out... Uh, Reeves as well, and bring in Gallagher so that we can just minimize injuries. We're up 2-0. It's the 82nd minute. We're fine. Not a great foul by Frankenstein, it must be noted. Um, anyway, the other, like, that line, I think because, like, when I was growing up, uh, like, old people did wear the bottoms of their trousers rolled. Yeah, you know, Frankenstein, just get off the field, okay? You're a doctor, not a person who debates referees. Just get off the field. It wasn't a good tackle. It was my fault. I apologize. Ooh, that's nasty. 
That is a nasty tackle on a nice ginger who did nothing. God, that's a beautiful, beautiful ginger. Whoa, he didn't even accept the handshake. I like your fire. I like his fire. Making three substitutions at once, just like the pros do. Um, I think because when I was a kid, old people did wear their trousers rolled, it felt to me like uh, this was a poem written uh, by or from the perspective of a person in this sort of like late middle age period uh, that I could actually understand and relate to and, and imagine their world as opposed to the vast majority of literature written about adulthood, um, which I found completely inaccessible and weird and, uh, and kind of just like blandly depressing. Um, are, are they ever going to kick the ball? Yes. So, uh, I think that's the other thing that really appealed to me about it, but ultimately it's just a collection of its, uh, like, like its meaning for me is just a collection of its images and like its greatness for me is in, is in the language itself. Um, and there aren't a lot of poems like that. Like usually I like poems, uh, not so much for their, for their imagery, uh, but for their, you know, like thematic content, I guess. Um, and that's, uh, that's the, that's really the number one exception I can think of. I mean, The Wasteland for me is also a poem I kind of like can go in and out of actual awareness of. Do we need to see it again? It was not a good tackle, and I'm sorry. All right. Frankenstein apologized. He reached down, tried to pick the guy up. Anyway, in two days when uh, Henry plays for uh, AFC Wimbledon, they'll have a talk. They'll, they'll work it out between the two of them. That's a nice ball. That's a nice ball from 10-man AFC Wimbledon. Oh, almost. If that, I'll tell you what, if that had been Reeves, I think it would have been in the net. But I really liked, I really liked the way that we switched play there um, and uh, moved, moved so quickly and well. It's Callum Kennedy. Oh, just over the bar. Just over the bar. And that's the end of the game. We won. It's a good poem, Jake. Thank you for the suggestion of the topic. AFC Wimbledon, Wimbley Womblies win 2-0. Get the second red card in two games. Sorry about that. My bad. I'm going to try to slide tackle less, but my heart just loves it. And uh, we'll try to pick up that Henry fella. He looked promising. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.